Okay. So I am uh, starting to cut out the, the final edges. I've done it for the lower body and the feet. Now I can do it to the tail because all those other overlaps have been taken care of. And the tail is pretty involved like the feet are, but then after that it will get a little bit easier. I used one a one feather pixel on the feet because they were a sharper material. Something that is more opaque and more reflective than fur or feathers. So I'm going to go back to a two feather. I um, unintended pun that it's called feathering to cut out the tail. It's always good to do a little bit of a test. Again, I have that green background that's going to give me some reflected light, which is bothersome. But you get reference where you get reference. So let me take out a chunk and see if that's about the right feathering. With a few deletes. Yeah, and that will work. Gives me enough enough control and enough softness. Don't know that I want as many bumps. I can always cut inside the feathers a little bit. Reduce some of that bumpiness. I've been drawing a lot of birds in the last few months. And what's tricky about wings and feathers is that they do all have to kind of line up or they will catch our eye for the wrong reasons. So they have to be in the right angle and you have to be careful how you distort them too much. But what you can get away with is less detail. So you don't need to preserve every every line of every every feather. You just need to preserve the overall direction of them and that they feel like they're working from a common place. And so if you're cutting out birds for your outside edges, cutting out feathers, you should feel free to remove little outliers or small feathers you don't think are telling the overall story to your image. That's not going to hurt the believability one bit. What will is if you place them so that the feathers are going at an awkward angle. Okay, so that's the tail. I wonder if this is from the tail too. Nope. Okay. So remember, you can move selections through your layers. And so I missed this t little bit of green onto this layer. So let me take care of that. All right. I think I'm going to do some internal compositing on this back edge behind the arm. So I'm going to do something pretty simple. A lot of internal compositing can help here. It's where you copy elements from an element you already have and just use it in a new way. So I do Command-J, then I'm going to move this up the spine. And warp it, transform it. I'm still not playing with lighting or coloring. I did a little bit of dodging and burning to get rid of that green, but other than that, not doing too much of that. Instead, I'm just playing with warping and placing and erasing.
but I think it'd be nice to have a little bit of that texture coming through. Then I take my soft edged eraser at 100% opacity, so 0% hardness. Maybe a little bit more hardness, it doesn't quite ghost out so much. Just to start hinting at those fur textures coming together. Okay. And then I will show you, um, once everything's cut out, how I can blend some of that texture onto the neck as well. But I like how the arm stands out as kind of a blonder fur right now, just so it shows up. Okay, so I've got that cut out. Now we move to the head, the next thing overlapping the background. Start with this seal head reference. And I'm going to go ahead and use keep using the two. And because this is more arbitrary, I'm just cutting out the fur wherever I think the fur needs to go. I'm just going to hold down shift and kind of make an arbitrary distinction about where that head should be. keep adding to my selection because I have shift held down. Okay. And now that I've got that big selection, remember you can move selections down between layers. So I'm going to take it off of the, the seal layer but then also take it off of the, the mallard duck layer and then, you know, any other layers where it might overlap. Because I've got so many things piling up on top of the head, even those frog eyes. And I'm getting a little bit of a halo. That's just because it was feathered. And I deleted more from some than from others. So I want to make sure I delete fully from all of them. And then I get a back edge. I'm not worried about these inner transitions yet. Because I want to play with color and lighting before I work on blending those. I'm just worried on the outside edges. And then this outside edge with the blue, this is where I need to get a little bit more specific into that seal layer. and start cutting into the fur with a little bit more zoom. So this is at 300 scale. I just want to have a little bit of that texture as we get closer to the eyes. So I'm just jogging in and out a little bit. And then I'm going to delete that from the layer behind as well. All right. Now I still have to delete this from the seal layer, that chunk, but I might as well work around uh, the bill I want to keep. So. It's from a lot of different references, right? So I have the under part of the bill there. I have the seal layer here. So I think I'm pretty safe cutting that out. Well, but maybe not, maybe I want, yeah, that's tough. Might have to internally composite some fur over there. Mm 
this bill needs to be cut out, and then the eyes. Hmm. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to keep my feather at two pixels. And then I'm going to cut through all the layers. So at 300% zooming in. Everything's placed. I just need to clean up that edge. And it's better to make the mistake of of leaving too much to be cut later than to cut in and lose things I might want to use. So I'll give everything a little bit of latitude. And I can always hold down Option and subtract from my selections as well. And then as soon as it overlaps with the body, I don't need to worry about it. It's just where it's overlapping with the background. So I'm going to hit delete, but then I'm going to move through all these different layers and hit delete once because it's feathered. And then I'm going to move through all of them and hit delete one more time to soften the feather just a little bit more. Okay. And even though I can go in a little bit more on that, that will be kind of a finishing touch once I've corrected color and everything else. Okay, I need to get rid of this green. Hmm. Yep, I do. decide how high this armpit will be, but I know I won't have green in it. And now, this is the last cutout. I have to decide on what the shape of this flipper is. And that's kind of tricky. So what I might do is internally composite it. So find the layer it's on, which is here, I believe, yep. And then just take a big chunk of it, hit Command X, which cuts it out, and then Command V, which pastes it on as a separate layer that I can place and manipulate. So Control T, maybe rotate it a little bit, maybe enlarge it a bit. But not too much because these pixels are locked and I don't want it to get too soft. Come on. Bring it in. I think that will work. All right, so now I have a sense of the shape I want for it. Remember, this was a seal lying on its back on the beach. So the lighting is going to be pretty different and we'll have to change. But this shows me what I need to cut out. And we'll leave it at that for now. But since this one comes to a pretty fine taper, let's go ahead and Taper it a little bit more. It is a seal fin, but it just looks like a piece of rock with all the sand coating. So with lighting and with coloring and with some texture, I can get that to work. Okay, so mission accomplished so far. I've got